Good afternoon and welcome to your one-off special edition Sport Uncovered TV show for this Friday afternoon. We'd like to have you join us today for what is an extra special show with some fantastic guests coming into the studio. We'll be joined by Joe Maposa on his recent bout against Lewis Norman and what is in store next for the Thornaby Boxer. Plus, we have three of Teesside University's most talented athletes in the studio to get their thoughts on growing up in sport. And we have an exclusive interview with George Reeves, the new president of activities at Teesside University, on how much of a key role his local sports club played for him and his aims for the next academic year. But we begin this afternoon in Washington, where one local, local boxer is jumping for joy after recently becoming the North East Regional Champion. Michael Harmison, who competes at District Youth Boxing Club in Sunderland, reflects on his recent victory, and I travelled to the club to speak with him. At age 11, Washington boxer Michael Harmison didn't expect to step foot in a boxing ring. But now, five years on, he is a North East Regional Champion, and looking forward to what he next has in store. I started boxing about five, six years ago. In school, I was just a little skinny young lad, and I uh, just wanted to like, know how to defend myself, really. That's all it was. Previously, I went to a boxing show about four weeks prior to coming here. I seen that, I was like, oh, well, it looks good. But then, my mum and my nana wouldn't let us, so, well, I was like, well, persuaded them and then let us, let us come. It was Sunderland boxer Josh Kelly who inspired Michael to take up boxing and he now sees the Olympic bronze medalist as an inspiration. Josh Kelly, uh, even when he was an amateur, looked like new women looked up to him. Despite being the North East Regional Champion, Michael hasn't always had it easy in the ring, going down in the semi-final of the National Championship. But he does admit losing developed him as a person. It was gutting, but like, just learn from it, that's all he can do. Um, it was a big achievement because it was my first time running to a championship. So I was still happy to come out and like, come out with a bronze. Just knowing that, like, not to give up, really. Uh, that's all, like, all it is, just like, you learn from everything. The final of the North East Regional Championship told a different story. Harmison coming out on top to claim the belt, and now aims to one day turn professional. Previously, boxer lad, uh, a couple uh, a month ago, like uh, before the uh, final, and uh, I beat him easy. But then I was carrying an injury in the final, but uh, still managed to beat him. But it was a big achievement for us, and me, mum, and me dad were really supportive. They get us there. It's a little bit late for us now to get onto the JB squad and set up, like. But um, hopefully, I'll go pro and try and do something in the pros. Now, staying on the boxing theme, you, re you may remember Sport Uncovered recently published an article on Thornaby boxer Joe Maposa on his recent bout against Lewis Norman. Well, Joe came away with glory and we now have him in the studio. Before that, George Crabb sent us this report. We're training every day, every day. You know, my coach Imran Naeem there is pushing me to the limit just to make sure we're, we're 100% for this one because this is a step up fight and we want to make sure that there's, there's no uh, stone unturned. So that's just a little bit of skipping that we like to do as well to warm up and also cool down. It's good for your rhythm, it's good for your fitness overall in boxing and it gets your feet moving as well so you're nice and warm. <laughs> That's what we do normally to get, get warmed up and get things moving. Um, it's great for your fitness, great for your timing, and also you can practice your footwork while you're doing it, your head movement. So it's a great overall exercise to get you warmed up. So that's the punch bag, which is good for your stamina and it's good for your combinations as well while we're working out. So Joe, welcome to Sport and Cover TV. It's great to have you back. Uh, last time we saw you was just for your bout with Lewis Norman. So can you take us through your thoughts going into the fight? Um, leading up to the fight, you know, um, a few weeks before it, um, it's all about just making sure your mindset is right, making sure the last little bits are, are correct and you're fully focused on, on that fight, really. So leading up to it, I was I was feeling very confident to be honest, and because um, I knew I'd done the work, you know, um, leading up to it. So yeah, I was feeling really good. 
Uh, taking you back to fight night, uh, can you take me through the day from start to finish? It's a long process for a boxer such as yourself. Um, uh, during the day, it's like, you obviously we wake up, have your food, breakfast, uh, make sure you're, you're well carved up, good energy foods like your oats, your bananas, and everything like that. And for me, I just like to relax, to be honest. I watch some movies, sit back, chill, make sure I'm not burning any, any energy that, that I don't need to. Um, maybe just go to sleep if I, if I have to during the day, take a nap, and then just head over to the venue feeling fresh and ready. Uh, going through to the fight, uh, it was a tough one, you said, so could you sort of explain why? Yeah, yeah, it was a very tough fight for me because Lewis Norman is an uh, experienced opponent, so obviously stepping up for myself, it was the first time doing six rounds as well, so I had to sort of gauge the time, gauge my opponent, and... Um, Going into it, I felt I felt confident that I could win the fight, but I always knew it wasn't going to be a straightforward win. Uh, you emerged victorious, that makes you 8-0 now. Would you say this the fight was the most important so far in your career? Definitely, definitely, because of the name that um, Lewis Norman has on his records as well. Um, he's boxed um, world champions, he's boxed European champions, Commonwealth champions. So for me to be him, get him on, on, on my record, it's a, it's a big big jump for myself. And from, from now on, we can push on and lead on to big fights and big events. Uh, coming out of that fight then, what could you tell us you've got in the pipeline at the minute? Um, at the moment, we're just working on my next fight date. Hopefully, fingers crossed, it's going to be on a big card, um, um, closer to home as well for everyone to, to get to it. Um, could possibly land at my first title. We'll see what happens, but um, I'm straight back in the gym um, just ticking over and getting ready for that phone call. Uh, looking after the next fight and maybe just at the rest of the year, how many fights are you trying to get in before the end of 2019? Hopefully, hopefully, if everything goes well, no injuries, um, hopefully we'll get another three fights in. I'm just looking to keep busy, actually, as, as busy as I can, you know, um, and make that progress up that ladder. Uh, Joe, it's been a pleasure having you in the studio today. Thanks for coming in. No, I appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks, George, and best of luck with Joe for his next bout. Teesside University have a wide range of sport and athletes and the Elite Athlete Scheme here at Teesside is a programme which aims to help the development of sports stars studying here in Middlesbrough. Next up we have three of the athletes in the studio to talk about their sport and story and how the Elite Athlete Scheme at the University has benefited them. Right, first of all, welcome to George and Mary and Paige. Thanks a lot for coming along to the Sport and Covered TV show today to wrap up our, our, wrap up our project. Obviously you all do very different sports, uh, so just go along the panel and um, just, just tell me how you're how you got into your sport when you were younger and what age and stuff? Do you want to start, Jordan? Uh, so, my name's Jordan and the sport I do is like, field hockey. And I started at the age of about 11, I think. And it's just progressed from there. Gradually got higher up the tees and then got into England selection and then played for England in the Sainsbury School Games in 2016. Um, I'm Mary and I first went on BMX track when I was five. My dad took me because he used to do it when he was younger. And yeah, um, <laughs> what do you want? I don't know what I'll say. Well, just say, just say, just say what's what you've sort of done since then. You sort oh. of rode to um, now. Yeah, I'm being British champion twice and national champion. Mm. Uh, I'm Paige. Um, I first got into triathlon when uh, my grandparents introduced me to it when I was seven years old. Um, they still do the sport, and it's sort of just progressed from there. Right, right. And obviously, local clubs, I imagine that's where you've gone along first, sort of local, local edge of BMX track or, or whatever. Um, so how important has that a local club level, that local level been to you, you all progressing? Do you want to start page this time? Yeah, um, I do a lot of my training with the local club, um, just because it's handy. And um, like my, gra say my grandparents are uh, um, a big part in running the club. So just sort of train with them and then go away to race when I need to. Yeah, I got to the local club at Hartlepool and I raced all over the country and I think all over Europe. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I started out at Mount Finesse, just around the corner. Um, it's really, it's, it's ideal because it's like, it was the Saturdays that I started and then it's like, you get to 13, you're allowed to play adult hockey, so it's a, like a great progression route. Mm. And obviously volunteers at that sort of local grassroots level are, um, you know, the key to it all, obviously, Paige, I know you volunteer yourself, so yeah. just how important are volunteers at that sort of low level? I don't, well, it's, especially in triathlon, um, it wouldn't take place, like local races wouldn't take place without volunteers, so it is really, really important, and it allows you to give something back, which 
to uh, to the sport, which mm. is really good. Um, any other volunteer comments from your local clubs? Uh, yes, it, it's like similar to Purge. It's um, like it's a fundamental way to get them to like help get the like the notice out of the sport. So. And obviously you're on the elite athlete scheme now at Teesside Uni, so do you just want to just tell me how a bit how that's developing you, how that's improving you? Just John John start John. Uh, yeah, so like I've I've been at the uni for tw like two years, and I've, like both years I've been on the prog like the program, and it's been like, ideal because like, I've had the help of like psychologists, nutritionists, like the gym staff, like Matt who gives us programs like tailored towards our our sports and what what our needs are. And it's it's, it's beneficial very much. Brilliant. Yeah, I've not had like it's offered some different sort of help, like psychologists and more like specific training because I just used to just do it by myself, my training, so it's a lot better now. Mm. Yeah, um, probably quite the same. Um, I never really used to do a lot of strength and conditioning and things like that, but um, since I've started the, the scheme this year, come on a lot and um, have helped me a lot because I was injured for a couple of months and given me like physio, rehab, things like that, which has really helped. And obviously you have all had success in your, in your respective fields, um, but do you want to just go on the power start with you, Paige, and just tell me your sort of career highlights so far? How, what's, what's been the best moment? Um, the best moment was probably uh, last year. I competed in the World Championships for my age in Denmark and got the silver medal, which was yeah, really, really good. Brilliant, brilliant. How did that feel? Oh, it was amazing. Um, sort of never really thought, like when I was seven, doing just doing local events, that it would like come to this. How long was your How long were you training for that? Um, sort of did probably about six months of really hard training before I went. Um, thankfully, didn't get injured like this year, but yeah, yeah. a lot of commitment, but paid off obviously in the end. Yeah. What about, what about you, Mary? Um, the first time I won the British Championships, I didn't expect win it because I've just come back from a broken foot so it was just it just felt really good because I just didn't have any expectations and I went and won it so <laughs> and do you find injuries sometimes do hold you back with BMX and obviously yeah definitely I've had a few <laughs> what sort of injuries you had down the years um main ones like concussion and um broken collarbone and broken ribs and stuff yeah yeah obviously you've been um national champ twice as well so what's that been like was it the first one was the one you preferred the first one better yeah, definitely first one, but doing it the second time is quite special as well because I didn't think I'd be able to do it again. So yeah, class. Uh, yeah, so like I said, the uh, century school games, uh, we we managed to get silver, which is a lot higher than we expected because our team we weren't exactly the greatest, but we weren't the worst, and it was against like countries like Wales, Ireland, Scotland, and they all came down, uh, all came across and. Came and played at the at Loughborough, and it was like it was a it was a great moment winning the silver. Brilliant, spot on. Well, thanks all for coming down. Thanks all for coming down. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thanks a lot for the panel, Joe. Next up, we have Steve Reeves here in the studio, the North Hans County Cricket Club trialist and Tisa University elite athlete. We speak to him about how Matt and the team help him as an elite athlete here at the university. Okay, Steve. So first of all, how did the elite athlete scheme come about? So the athlete scheme came about, um, I was just really just messing around in the gym one day and um, I saw one of my mates in the gym who had heard about it and said, oh, you should, you should apply for the athlete scheme and, and I just did it out of chance really. I was, I was, I think I was about a week too late for it, um, but applied and, and luckily got in, had an interview with Matt and, and got in with that. So what does the athlete scheme kind of involve on a daily basis? So on a daily basis, it's, uh, well, it depends which sort of set you're in so leading up to your season you'll have different areas that you work on so for instance I did speed and agility to begin or speed and agility now and then it was more strength at the beginning of the preseason. Um, so it just it just varies on what you're doing whether you're in the gym whether you're in the pool running whether you're coming back from injury whether you have to take load off put a load on so it just varies but it's all all expertly calculated. And there's a quick edit. What have you kind of been working on specifically leading up to this cricket season? Um, fitness, quite a lot of fitness to be able to play for the four day games, uh, come out of it and be able to do exactly the same a few days later. Um, but with that, you still need strength. So I've been working on 
on my off days on strength and strength through the movements and everything that I do in cricket. And do you feel like the elite athlete scheme really does prepare you for, for being a professional professional athlete? Yeah, it's, it's, I would say it's the best way you can get the professional help that the professionals actually do get in terms of strength conditioning without being in that professional environment, so without being at a county, without being at a club, at a franchise. I think um, the lead athlete scheme really, really puts everything um, up for you and, and prepares you for that. So for each individual athlete, what would you say kind of the, the daily routine would be for, for them in terms of coming at the gym and, and spending the day with Matt and, Matt and the team? Yes, yeah, so I think, so the set thing is 7.45 you're in the gym, whether you've arranged a strength session, rehab session, um, recovery, hits, something like that. Uh, finish at about 9, 9.30 and then depends on, <coughs> so that's the set times and then whatever you've organised with Matt for the rest of the day is yours, whether you've got um, sports psychology or you just go into the library, do your own work, that's up to you after that. In what is Teesside University? What is it? Is it so good in terms of sport and, and athletes and prepare, preparing people? What is it that Teesside do so well? I think because it's not as big as, as other universities, you get more focus. So you don't have a whole team of 11 men or 15 men like in rugby um, being focused on. So you get individual help. Um, and that's what I've found the best for me is that I've had my own program for specifically just for me um, and we work on it on a daily basis and there's changes that are made on, on a daily basis to how, how I'm feeling. And there might be somebody for a college who's a professional athlete or wants to be a professional athlete, he's joining Teesside in the future, what would you say to them to kind of get involved in the elite athlete scheme? Well, I'd say definitely come to Teesside if you're looking at um, sort of furthering your career um, because not only the sports side but the academic staff really, really help with the athlete scheme. So. Um, you know, I don't think I would have been able to, to do qualify my law degree um, if I didn't have the athlete scheme and vice versa. So definitely get involved, email Matt, see how you can get involved with him, whether you're too late, too early, um, just see and, and it's definitely something I would go for. Fantastic, it's great, cheers. Perfect, thanks. Imagine captain in your country at Team GB level and travelling around the world. For one youngster in the region, he was this week selected to captain the under-18s ball hockey team for the World Championships. I caught up with Stuart Jackson and his mum Carol in Stanley, County Durham. A member of Stanley Stingers ball hockey team in County Durham has his eyes set on representing Team GB under 18s in next year's World Championships in Switzerland. 16 year old Stuart Jackson already has a top record in the sport and was last year selected to captain the under 16s GB squad at national level. Yeah, so back in last year, I actually was captain. And that really just made like the whole experience much better. So really it just came down to experience. I was the only player to actually play in two of the world championships and I played the longest in for GB and the national development teams. And it was age eleven when Stewart began to get recognised on the court. At the age of eleven to go out there and play against top age sixteen year olds, six foot odd, that was a little uh, younger me. It's uh, it was really hard but it's brought us on a ton, really. Competing for Team GB has involved travelling around the globe, but Stuart's mum, Carol, wouldn't change it for the world. I'm absolutely immensely proud of Stuart. He, um, from the age of 11, he did his first World Championships. From then, he's strived, he's grown as a per not only as a person, but as a, a really good ball hockey player as well. And last year, with him taking over as captain of the under-16s, absolutely fantastic. So they've uh, really helped us along the way, you know, uh, all the sacrifices they've made for me and I just need to show it and do my best out there for them. Stewart now only has one key goal and that is to be selected for next year's World Championships and knows with hard work he can make the squad. Yeah, so uh, I'm looking to make the 2020 team to go away with the U18s and maybe it's the U20s to Switzerland for the World Championships. So, and after that, I think, on the men's. Sam Blacklock reporting in Stanley, County Durham. Having progressed through the rugby teams at Teesside University, current student George Reeves has been elected as the new Teesside University President of Activities. 
Next up, we have George in the studio on his, on his aims and plans for the next academic year. So uh, we are joined now by George Reeves, the newly appointed president of activities. First of all, George, congratulations. Thank you very much. Appointed. Appreciate it. Just uh, how proud are you to, to have been appointed? Um, with the, especially with the result, I'm quite happy. Obviously, Neil was a credible candidate. We've uh, got a good relationship with Neil, but yeah, buzzing. So what, what are your aims now in the role? What are you hoping to achieve over the next academic year? Um, so the three main goals I had in my campaign were uh, governing body relationships. So it's getting better relationships with people like the RFU, the FA, with the clubs at the university, uh, gaining the experience and the wealth of knowledge that they have coming from their workshops, etc. Uh, another thing, CPD opportunities. So getting more people from clubs involved with uh, working with kids, coaching, refereeing, things like that. And uh, getting the smaller clubs the recognition that they deserve. So obviously, teams that don't compete on campus probably get broadcasted a little less than they should do. So getting the, elevating their knowledge and around the campus. So obviously, you, you've been a part of the rugby team yep. since you time at university. How important would you say it is for new students, you know, freshers, to get involved in, in sports clubs if they've got an interest in it? Um, I think rugby is a bit, a bit of a niche market because we don't play on campus and stuff, but if, being part of a club has been an awesome experience for me. I'd recommend it to any new student coming in. Uh, the friendships that you make, uh, even just going on the socials, the, even if it's just a, just just don't join as a social member, such a beneficial experience. So moving back now to, to rugby, when when did you first get into the sport and, and what club was it with? Um, so my dad was in the forces, so I moved around quite a lot, and uh, I lived mainly in Germany through like my younger years. So I didn't really offer rugby that much. So I played football until I was about thirteen. Uh, came back to England and finally settled in Whitby, so that's the club that I first started for. But obviously, because Whitby is quite a small place, we didn't they didn't have that many younger age groups. So um, I started playing at school mainly. Uh, ended up playing for the county team, and w because there was no age group clubs at Whitby, I ended up training with the seniors when I was like 16 years old. So that that's where. I where my roots come from. Did that sort of, would you say sort of, you know, training with the scenes at such a young age, does that really sort of help um, you grow up quite quickly, I imagine? Yeah, well, when I was at school, when I was in year 10, my brother was in after six and we used to play in the first team at school together. So I think it was a coming of age experience. So it was good, it was good fun. My brother was in the first team when I first started training. So kind of like got looked after a bit more. <laughs> so what, what would you say your highlights been of your, of your rugby career, more specifically at university? Um, obviously playing for county was a good, but uh, university, I'd probably say, in my first and second year, we won varsity back to back. Um, in my first year as well, we lost to a team called Doncaster College by 110 points. We played them again this year, four years later, and only lost by 10. So it's, it shows the improvement from clubs because we have an affiliation with Darlington Malden Park, which is a local club in Darlington, and they have a professional setup. So a few of their players come down and coach us twice a week. And uh, I think the input from them and the affiliation has done us wonders, and we've yeah. improved massively from that. So once, obviously, once you, you leave the university, do you, do you think you're going to carry on playing rugby? Uh, I think rugby is quite a big part of my life, so I'll definitely carry on playing. It's given me so much more confidence and I've gained a lot of experience and a lot of really good relationships with people and connections from that. So I definitely will play rugby after, so after you, university. Would you recommend, you know, people who, who maybe like rugby sort of follow it, would you recommend them to join a club and, and to get involved as much as um, they can? Yeah, uh, well, actually, conveniently, I actually work as a game finder for the RFU. So the RFU is the governing body for rugby and... Uh, so a game finder basically is like a middleman between clubs and the, the people themselves. So if someone contacts me, I can put them in contact with a club or just a social team to go down and have a, have a few beers or just to train with. So I definitely recommend going and playing rugby, even if you just have that small inkling of wanting to play. Brilliant. Now, since February, the team has been working hard travelling around the North East, speaking with footballers, cricketers and rugby players on their fantastic sport of success. We've had some fantastic days out and have met some fantastic people. Let's get the group's thoughts on the last eight weeks. So, what would we say the best place we've been in the past eight weeks is? Table tennis for me. I think I'd go to table tennis. You know, we met some good people there. Mm. Uh, Chris, the guy who ran the club, really nice guy. We all got some good interviews out of it. Yeah. All spoke really well, some good stories. And then we had a laugh playing table tennis as well. Yeah. It was a good trip. Luke, do you want to? I, I enjoyed Brandon, to be fair. Uh, I think Alex was great. Alex was really good. He was really accommodating. Uh, I got really good. Simon was probably the, my favourite person that I've interviewed so far. So I'd say Brandon was my best place. Likewise to Joe, I quite enjoyed going to the, the, table, the table tennis club. I think that was... Table tennis is quite... From the outside, you think it's quite a small sport. But actually going to that club and seeing how many people actually play yeah. all ages. I mean, you had like seven-year-old boys up like a, a veteran table tennis player who was doing fantastic. I think 
going there, we kind of got the insight into what what table tennis is like from a from an outsider's perspective, and I thought that was that was really well. So that, that was probably my 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 favourite place to visit. I'll go the same as that. Yeah. I went for uh, Brandon. Brandon was good. I thought the people there were really interesting, and uh, I think just Alex and Hull as I got yeah. to interview him and bring him back. Like yeah. his story is ridiculously successful. It's one of those people that you look at and think, why can't I be more like him? Yeah, Alex, Alex was, fun, was I mean, fantastic. He's, he's so he? appreciative of all the work we've done as well. Like every time someone's messaged him like, and asked for stuff, he's always said thank you for how much work you've put in. And yeah. It's, it's good that people are appreciating how much work we've put in. And all the articles did well as well, obviously, and people, people retweet them. And even going into table tennis, right? When Before we went, I was expecting you know four tables and yeah. you know not even four. No one we'd, there. You know, we'd just be able to play all night. But it was, yeah. like, there was, it was loads, wasn't it? Oh, there was a good 20, 30 tables. Yeah, there. easy. There, there were four. It was absolutely round. packed, wasn't it? So what about favourite person we've met? Throughout the weeks, uh, mine would be Jimmy. Yeah, last week mine would be Hobart. Jimmy as well. The guy we did the podcast with, he was really good. Just yeah, again, it's more like one of those stories. You just think you listen to it, and you think like it, it's like it could be a movie. It, it was so mm. interesting to sit and listen and talk to him and kind of like hear about how he got from a normal childhood to Iraq to a bronze medalist in America. Like good story to listen. He to. was a really nice bloke. Yeah, as a well. really nice bloke as well. In terms of meeting somebody, we've met so many fantastic people. Who's, I mean, Team GB athletes and and vet veterans who have done amazing in sports. So it, it just shows how many fantastic people he is in the North East. That's the thing, isn't it? I, like think, I think as well, we've got to think everybody who's helped us out has done it with like no benefit to themselves, really. Yeah. Mm. So like a lot of people didn't want to be on camera and stuff, but still done it. And it's <laughs> still made them, they've still all been great people to me. Yeah. yeah. When we go to bigger clubs though, like Falcon say, it was the first one we went to, yeah. which could have been a better trip if we went further down the line, I think. Um, but it, there was something in it for them because you know, they were getting a bit of media, because they might go on to be professional rule players, thing, they were getting yeah. a bit of media training for free, you know, we were doing, you know, so we were just going down and that, I think that helped them and it does it benefit kind of certain people. A bit like Durham, to be fair, we went to the cricket, Durham, like, exactly, yeah. it's <laughs> great to, like, they've said, the, the managers have said it's great to stick a 17 year old <laughs> in front of a camera, because it'd much rather be, it's better for them to mess up in front of us than if Sky yeah. come down one day. And any trips that we've been to, you think, without doing sport uncovered, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have got introduced to that sport and I wouldn't have kind of, actually seeing what goes on from the from the inside as an outsider? Maybe netball for me. Yeah, like, fencing was another one. Tennis, but netball, I thought, was... To go to such a successful netball club as well, something like most people probably wouldn't appreciate because like, yeah. it's not a sport you're interested in, mm. so you might not appreciate that they are like one of the top, top dogs of netball in the country. Mm. So it was a big honour to actually get invited down to go there, I suppose. I think for me, the, the ball hockey, actually putting on, yeah, the, putting on the, the, the costume and actually having the helmet costume. on it. Hard actual balls flying all over, but actually filming. What about the karate for you? Yeah, well, yeah, karate was obviously... <laughs> I'd, never, I'd never done karate before, so having a go at karate was... It was interesting, that was a, it was a good experience. Fair to say, I won't be doing it again, but... <laughs> that was quite so a good doubt early yeah, on, actually. Yeah. It was, because, to be honest, we weren't... We did it it didn't sports. look great when we got there. We thought, no. oh, this is going to be tough. Yeah. But we all got a good interview out of it, in yeah, the we end. we all did a lot of different sports. Yeah, we, we all tried. Golf, some cricket, yeah. uh, karate, table tennis. Yeah. Yeah. We met some good people. We met, obviously, Chris from there as well. Yeah. So led yeah. to one of the best things. Best that place we've been to. We've all been yeah. to, yeah. Yeah. What about learning as we've gone along? What anything disasters we've had or we've learned from? Well, Gates it wasn't great, was it? When the Sound settings on yeah. the camera that mm -hmm. had been faffed about with. Radio Max dying. Radio Max dying on multiple occasions. But I think overall, like learning, yeah, I think the massive thing is uh, talking to people before they get on camera. Mm. The first yeah. place you went was kind of like put them on a camera that we didn't know enough about to ask them specific questions, whereas the longer it's got down the line, the more specific questions we've asked. And mm. I think the interviews have got better, and they've been like more specific to that person mm. rather than just kind of general to the sport. It's I think, as well, we've learned how to deal with a bad interview per se. Like, if an interview's not as good as another one, I think we've still managed to get a piece out of it, even if yeah. it's just a written piece. I think it's kind of weird. Well, everybody's got a story to tell, haven't they? That's Everyone, in, story some, in some way or another. Some people just don't like being It's on funny camera. how yeah. when you put a camera on someone, though, they freeze up and, and they miss out a bit. So you, so you might speak to them off camera and they might say, oh, yeah, I was national champion of, of, of whatever, and then you get on camera, and it, unless you ask yeah. them, they, they wouldn't have even mentioned stiff it. Stiff as a board, yeah. 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 I mm -hmm. think it's just, to be fair, because a lot of these people we've interviewed are like 16 and 17. Mm. And if someone turned up when I was 16, like if, when I was playing football, if someone turned up with a camera and went, right, talk, yeah, true. you'd mm -hmm. go stiff as a board. So yeah, I, can un true. I can understand people don't want to be on camera. Yeah. But I think overall, we've, we've, it's been a fantastic experience, oh, yeah, hasn't definitely. it? Definitely. Unbelievable, yeah. You meet, you, we've met some people who, without doing this, we probably would never never have come across. Never heard of. of. Like, no. like you said, people like Alex have like, has got He's a... a British Empire medal. Yeah. He's like charity fundraising and like, services to boxing. Yeah, like, he's just now looking at him as like a normal guy. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
It's, that is really it's something that we can look, definitely look back and be proud of in like five years. Like, yeah, yeah. Mm. I feel like we've created an actual audience as well. Like those people yeah. that use sport and yeah. because it does what they need it to do. Yeah. It tells the media that isn't getting the attention it needs. Well, that's what we started out at the start was yeah. to, to, to set up a platform for, for up and coming sports stars in the North East mm. who, who don't get the media publicity. So I, I fair to say, I think we've, we've definitely Perhaps, achieved yeah, that. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, one thing I suppose we haven't mentioned, what do you think what about volunteers? Well, uh, yeah, we've some fantastic volunteers. We've met some people that yeah. do a lot yeah. for nothing in return, in all honesty. <laughs> yeah. It's mad to think how much people do give up their own time and just to run gyms yeah. and to help other clubs out with nothing in return. It's a massive thing. Even like the Beacon, yeah. all the all, all the people that were volunteering yeah. there, like all the sort of the staff members, like the, we spoke to a couple that had given up a whole day in the middle of half term. Yeah. That they could probably spend with their own kids to make sure other kids enjoy yeah. themselves. I think it's really good that people... You don't see as much of that maybe these days, which yeah. is good. It's sad to be coming to an end. I know. And, uh, yeah, well, yeah, long, long, long few months, but finally, finally. I feel like I feel like we've achieved what we wanted to. Like you said, you know, we set out at the start mm-hmm. and hitting ten k views last night was a nice little milestone. I think we said right at the beginning, you know, what do you reckon we'll get eight, eight to ten k? Yeah. Hit ten k. That's at the top hit of that bracket. Still with three days to go. Still three days oh, to go. On our best week yeah. as well so far. So yeah, yeah. It's, it's good. It's going well. Yeah. yeah. And mm-hmm. this is the last. Thing. It's the big, yeah, it's big the big finale. The time has come to say goodbye on today's Sport Uncovered TV show. On behalf of myself and the whole Sport Uncovered team, we'd like to say thank you to everybody for their continued support throughout the project. We'd like to say thanks to all clubs, athletes and volunteers who were willing to take part. And finally, thanks to everybody who has viewed, liked and shared our content over the past six weeks. So that is it from us here at Sport Uncovered. Thanks for watching and a fond farewell.